This data represents the data that you may have obtained yesterday in your Coulomb's law activity. You manipulated the separation distance between two charges, and you found the resulting electric force. You may have got a table that looks something like this. Separation distance in the first column, electric force in the second column. You need to plot a graph with this, see what the shape of that graph is, and then do something with that in order to determine what Coulomb's constant is. We're going to take this sample data and we're going to plot the graph for you, illustrating a couple of mistakes that commonly come up, specifically mistakes that were coming up yesterday for you guys. Now, I'm not entirely sure why those mistakes arose for some of you and why they didn't for others, but in the end they did, and we know how to fix these now. So let's take a look at this. We highlight our data. You can choose to highlight the data with the headings on the columns or without. It doesn't really matter. In the end, you're going to, once you have your data highlighted, click Insert Chart, or just click on the shortcut over here for Insert Chart. Either way, it doesn't really matter. You will, in both cases, end up with a bar graph. You don't want a bar graph. We always get a bar graph when we click Insert Chart, but we always want a scatter plot. So that's the first thing we're going to change. We're going to go over here to the Chart Editor, click on Chart Type, scroll down, to where we see a scatter plot, that looks better. It's not perfect by any means, but it looks better than what we saw. Now, if you look down towards the bottom of this chart editor, you can see two boxes that are checked. Use row one as headers. If you highlight everything, including the headers, that should be checked. If you only highlighted the numbers, then make sure that that box is unchecked. Okay, I highlighted the numbers and the headers, so I want that box checked. Now, some of you saw a graph that looked something like this. How many of you guys saw the red dots and the blue dots? That's because, for whatever reason, your graph by default had this box where it says use column A as labels unchecked. So if you were seeing the red dots and the blue dots, go in and check off that column that says use column A as labels. The red dots disappear, and you're closer to being where you want to be. Now, it's still not perfect because we still see on our x-axis uneven intervals. We're going down by 0.1 here, but then we're going down by a different value down here. We want two things on our x-axis, A, even intervals, and B, we want our numbers to be going up rather than going down. Here's the fix to that. Why it does that for some of you, I'm not exactly sure, but here's the fix. If we click on this, you can see over here in the chart editor now, there's a little box that's checked that says treat labels as text. If your graph is proper, that box won't be checked. I think what's happening here is that when Google Sheets plots your graph, it thinks the numbers that you highlighted are text as opposed to numbers. So it doesn't like to, to plot that if it's text as opposed to numbers. So what we want to do is uncheck that box if it's checked for you. And then I get a graph that looks like this that is much closer to what I expect to get. You can see on my x-axis here, the intervals are even, and you can also see those numbers are going up as opposed to going down. Now, of course, at this stage, you want to check your axes to see if they're labeled properly. They are. You want to check your, your title to see if it's y-axis versus x-axis. In this case, it is. Now we want to plot a trend line. To plot a trend line, we're going to click on Series. We're going to click on Trend Line. The default is linear. Clearly, this should not be linear. So we're going to click on Type, and we're going to scroll down, down, down here to Power Series. If this graph is plotted properly, then you can see that a Power Series fits beautifully. That's all you need to do with that graph, other than copy and paste it into your document. Now, I'm going to show you one more thing. There is a second graph that you have to plot, and that second graph is force on the y-axis, and it has 1 over the separation distance squared on the x-axis. You can take each of these numbers, square them, and then go 1 over that number, or you can take a shortcut. The shortcut is to click on this, this cell here, Say equals, whenever you're entering a formula, you'll always press equals first. Say 1 divided by 
Let's use some brackets here because we're squaring the denominator. 1 over A2. It's row, or sorry, column A, row 2, or 0 0.17 squared. So let's say 1 over uh, 0 0.17 times, click on that again, 0 0.17, or 1 over A2 times A2. When I press enter, forgot the one. When I press enter, it gives me the number 1 over 0.17 squared. Now, that's not any quicker than doing it on your calculator. But if you click on that cell and then click on this little box in the bottom right corner of that cell and drag that down, that's much quicker than calculating each of these on your calculator. If you've already done them on the calculator, that's fine. If you haven't and you want to do it like this, that's also fine. Now we go to plot this graph. To plot this graph, we once again highlight everything. We're going to insert a chart. You can see in this case, for whatever reason, it didn't label my axes. That's okay. We'll go back and do that later. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. I'm not sure why. In the end, let's do all those other things first. This is a bar graph. We don't want that. We want a scatter plot. So we scroll down to scatter plot. Looks better. Look, we have two uh, sets of dots on here, the blue dots and the red dots. How do we say to fix that? Make sure both of these boxes are checked. Use column D as labels, and it looks better there. Now, if you look at our x-axis, it's still uneven intervals. The numbers are going up this time, but it's still uneven. So how do we fix that? Click on the x-axis, uncheck the box that says treat labels as text. Now we get a perfect straight line. Go up here to series, add your trend line. It's linear by default, which looks like it's the correct trend line. Now that we have a linear trend line, we're going to label that using the equation, which is going to show me the slope. The slope is 0 0.0181. Then you're going to use that slope in order to figure out what the Coulomb's constant is. Now, you can see that my title is wrong and my axes aren't labeled. So what I'm going to do up here, scroll up here. I'm going to chart and axis titles. Chart title. Just highlight this and type in whatever the chart title should be. Then change it to horizontal axis title. Type in whatever the horizontal axis should be. Then click on vertical axis title and click on whatever that should be. And you've done your graphs.